Yesterday we learned to analyze problems in which charged particles were accelerating in electric fields. And what I want you to take away from yesterday, if you can take one thing away from yesterday, I want you to remember that when a charged particle speeds up in an electric field, it's like a car speeding up as it's going down a hill. I want you to think of that every single time. Just like in unit one, when we saw force versus time graph, I want you to, want you to automatically think area equals impulse. Just like when we saw a funny angle, I want you to, wanted you to think, I don't like funny angles. Okay, now I want you to think, every time you see a charged particle speeding up, I want you to think a car going down a hill. Now, when a car goes down a hill, we know that it speeds up. And as it speeds up, we know that we have a conversion of energy taking place of potential to kinetic energy. That doesn't mean we lose all of our potential. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes if we're going halfway down the hill, we've still got potential, but we lose potential and we gain kinetic. Now, Sometimes, again, you've got kinetic energy at the beginning in addition to the potential, and you've got potential energy at the end in addition to the kinetic, but it's always this conversion. Always lose potential, always gain kinetic energy in that case. Now, it's no different when we're talking about two charged particles, or sorry, a charged particle speeding up between, let's say, two parallel plates or through an electric field. If I've got a positive plate right here and a negative plate right here, and I've got a positive particle that's moving toward the negative plate, once again, it's going to be a conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy. The difference here is that the potential energy isn't mgh, the potential energy is Q times V. Now, on your data sheet, I'd like you to take a look at your data sheet under electricity and magnetism for a second. You're going to see this equation on your data sheet. Delta V is equal to delta E over Q. That's almost the one that we're using for electric potential energy, but not quite. Delta V stands for potential difference. Not potential, potential difference. We're using potential through these problems. And I'll explain what the difference between potential and potential difference is in just a moment. The potential difference is the difference in energy per coulomb of charge between two spots. So if you had a potential of 10, and now you've got a potential of 6, the potential difference would be 4. 4 volts, or 4 joules per coulomb. We can modify this equation ever so slightly to say if potential difference is delta E over Q, then potential would be E over Q, and then therefore energy would be Q times V. That's what we really need here, is the electric potential energy, not the electric potential energy difference. So it's going to be Q times V, not Q times delta V. It's a small thing, and in fact, to be honest, you probably get away with it. Even if you make that mistake, you probably get away with it. But let's try to understand what really should be here, uh, Q times V potential versus potential difference. Let's take a look at question number five that we had for homework last night. It said a potential difference of 100 volts exists between two parallel plates or across two parallel plates that are 16 centimeters apart. An electron begins at rest at one of the plates and accelerates toward the second plate. How fast is the electron moving when it's traveled four centimeters, when it's traveled eight centimeters, when it's traveled 16 centimeters? This electron is speeding up as it goes across these plates. Clearly, it says it begins at rest and accelerates. It's speeding up. That's like a car going down a hill. When a car goes down a hill, we have a conversion of potential to kinetic energy. That's what we have here, a conversion of potential to kinetic energy. Let's picture the car going down the hill. Okay, not pic Don't picture the electron going across this gap. Picture the car going down the hill. Here's my car at rest at the top of the hill. It's got a height of 100 meters. Not 16 centimeters. Okay, that's not my height. My height is analogous to electric potential, so my height is going to be uh, 100 meters. Now, when it's gone 4 centimeters across the gap, I want to find the speed at that point. How far down the hill has the car gone? If this electron's gone four centimeters across the gap, the car has gone how far down the hill? Yep. Good. 25. So its final height would be 75 meters if we stick with the analogy here, right? 
We don't need this 16 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 8 centimeters, other than to determine how far down the hill it's gone, how much of the potential difference has been used up, right? We've gone a quarter of the way down the hill. So we now have a height of 75 meters. Now, if we're going to turn this into an electricity problem, then we'd, of course, have not a height of 75. We'd have a potential of 75 volts. We'll deal with that in just a second, though. What kind of energy do we have at the top of this hill? Well, it's not moving. It has a height, so it's got potential energy. What kind do we have not at the bottom of the hill, but what kind do we have when it's moved a quarter of the way down the hill? Do we still have potential? Because we still have a height. Is it moving a quarter of the way down the hill? Absolutely it is. We've lost potential energy here. We've gained kinetic energy. The total energy remains the same. We still have potential, but we have less than we have when we started. We're going to replace MGH now with QV because, of course, we're not really dealing with a mechanics problem. We're dealing with an electricity problem. Let's sub in my charges and my potentials now. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times VI would be 100 volts. Not 100 meters high, but 100 volts. Not 16 centimeters. Okay, 100 volts. Charge is 1.6 again, times 10 to the minus 19. VF is 75 volts, because we've gone a quarter of the way across. Let's add to that one half of the mass times VF squared. And now let's calculate that value. We get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 100 plus equals, and now let's subtract from that brackets 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 75. And then let's times that by 2, divide by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And then let's go root that. We end up with a value of 2.96 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, which is reasonable. We we expect usually for a speed of a charged particle in this context to be somewhere in the 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6 range. It could be less. It could be more. It will not be more than this number, 3 times 10 to the 8, because that's the speed of light. But it could be upwards of that. But this is, this is pretty reasonable because this is usually the range that we see, 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6. All right? Now, what could we have done to make this just a little bit simpler? At least mathematically a little bit simpler. Conceptually, I'm not sure that it's simpler, but mathematically it is. We said that we went from a potential of 100 to 75. Sometimes it's a little unclear what the initial and the final potential is. Sometimes we're given the potential difference across which it goes, not the initial and the final. Caitlin, what were you going to say? Yeah, it doesn't really matter what we use for the initial and the final as long as the difference is correct. My initial is 100 here. My final is 75 here. Caitlin was suggesting that we use an initial of 25 and a final of zero. As long as the difference in potential is 25, this question is going to work out. Does that make sense? I, it's just like on this hill question over here. I could have said my initial height was 25, my final height was zero if I had have defined this as ground level, right? Remember that. If it ever gets confusing as to what my initial potential is, what my final potential is, because sometimes they don't tell us, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just make sure that your difference is your potential difference. If it says it accelerates across potential difference of 10 volts, make your, make your initial... Zero, make your final 10. Make your initial 100 if you want. Make your final 110. Make your initial 32.5. Make your final 42.5 for all I care. Just make sure your final is 10 more than your initial, that your difference is 10 or 25 in this case.
Okay, let's take a look at the second part of this question here. Uh, EI equals EF again. This time, we're going to say my initial potential is 100. My final potential this time isn't 75. My final potential would be... The gap is 16 centimeters. I've gone 8 centimeters. How far across the gap have I gone? 50%, halfway. So my potential will be 50. Now, I could have said my initial potential was 600. My final was 550. I could have said my initial, and this would have made more sense, my initial potential is 50, my final would be zero. doesn't really matter as long as the difference in potential, the potential difference is 50 volts. When you do that, you end up getting an answer of 4.19 times 10 to the 6. which seems reasonable. Once again, it's in that range of 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6, and it's faster than the last one, which, of course, the further you go down the hill, the faster you're going to be moving, right? Question C. How's C going to change? Okay, we've gone 16 centimeters. How far did I have to go to get to the bottom of the hill? 16 centimeters. My initial potential is 100. What's my final potential? Zero. So for question C, we wouldn't have any potential energy because we've reached the bottom. Now, you could, if you wanted to, say you had potential energy, make the final potential 150, but your initial potential would be, Caitlin, if you made your final potential, I don't know why you do this, but if you made your final potential 150, your initial potential would be 250, right? 100 volts more than your final potential. The potential difference has to be 100 volts there. The answer we get for C is 5.93 times 10 to the 6, which again makes perfect sense. It's in that 10 to the 6 range, which we expect, and it's bigger than it was before. We were all the way down the hill. Of course, we're going to be moving faster at the bottom of the hill versus halfway down the hill. Let's take a look at a new diagram here. It's going to look a lot like yesterday's diagram, but not quite. Yesterday was a car going up a hill. Today, sorry, down a hill. Today, it's a car going up a hill. We're going to start at a speed of 20 meters per second. We're going to say uh, the height of the hill is 5.0 meters. And we want to find, let's say, the speed of the car when it reaches the top of the hill. Assuming it doesn't stop, right? How fast is the car moving when it reaches the top of the hill? Well, we would say EI equals EF. But this time, instead of saying a conversion of kinetic to potential, potential to kinetic energy, it would be the other way around, kinetic to potential. We would start off with kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill. And at the top of the hill, we'd still have kinetic if it's still moving. If it stops, then it wouldn't have kinetic. Plus potential energy. And we'd solve for VF there. What kind of energy are we losing there? What kind of energy is decreasing in here? Kinetic energy, right? Kinetic energy is going down. What kind of energy is increasing? That's potential energy. That's exactly opposite to what we saw yesterday, right? And in the problems that we did for homework last night. When we're going down the hill, we're converting potential to kinetic. When we're going up the hill, we're converting kinetic to potential. What doesn't change? Well, the total energy stays the same. The gravitational field stays the same. It's 9.81 wherever you are on this hill. And the gravitational force doesn't change. Just like yesterday, those three variables stay the same. Now, let's draw another picture. This time, let's make it two parallel plates. This time, I'm drawing the plates vertically, notice. There's no reason why they have to be like they were yesterday. Yesterday, I drew them that way so that you could see the analogy a little bit better of the charged particle going across the plates being like the car going down the hill. But it doesn't really have to be down. It just had to be speeding up to be like the car going down the hill. This time, we're going to make the charged particle going from left to right. But it's still going to be slowing down like the car is when it goes up the hill. It's going to be slowing down because it's a negative particle starting with a speed of 1 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. We're going to say my potential difference here is 5 volts. And I'm going to say I'm looking for the speed of this particle when it reaches the other side. This particle is going to slow down because it's a negative particle 
going toward a negative plate. It's being repelled by the plate it's trying to go to. Kind of like the car is being repelled by the top of the hill, in a sense. Picture this as the car. Picture this as the green diagram over here. EI equals EF. Okay, My negative car here has kinetic energy at the beginning. My negative car here reaches the other side and is still moving, so it still has kinetic energy. My negative car here also has potential energy when it gets to the other side because it's slowing down. Just like the car slowing down gains potential, the charge slowing down gains potential as well. But it's not MGH potential, is it? It's going to be QV potential. Now, technically, VF stands for the final potential. But if we make the initial potential zero, then the final potential is just the same as the potential difference, right? So in this case, we've probably given the potential difference, set the initial zero, the final equal to the potential difference, and then solve for VF, just like we did in the last one. What's decreasing here? Well, just like the car, we're losing kinetic energy. We're gaining potential energy. What doesn't change? The total energy stays the same all across. What else doesn't change? The electric field is the same everywhere between those plates. And what else doesn't change? The electric force is the same everywhere between those plates. All right, here's your example that's on the sheet that I photocopied and gave to you yesterday. It says an electron is released in an electric field that's moving at a speed of 5 times 10 to the 6 in the direction of the field. Okay, picture this here. An electron is moving to the right in the direction of the field. What's the direction of the force on this electron? No, the left. A negative particle always experiences a force opposite to the field, right? Against the field. So the force on this is to the left. If it's moving to the right and experiences a force to the left, what happens to it? Speed up or slow down? It's going to slow down. If it moves to the right, but the force is to the left, it slows down. That's like a car going up a hill, right? When the car goes up the hill, we start off with kinetic energy, always. When a car goes up the hill, we start off with kinetic energy. As it goes up the hill, that kinetic energy is converted to potential. But we're trying to, um, we're trying to find uh, not the final potential energy, gravitational potential, but rather electric potential. So we're going to replace MGH with QV. Now, why did I not put one half mv squared on the right hand side? Read the question, Cody, because it says it stops, right? And the last thing we did, we had it still moving when it reached the top. Now we got it stopping when it gets to the top, so it doesn't have any kinetic energy. Let's sub in some numbers here. My mass is 9.11. So we're going to say 0.5 times 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 times 5 times 10 to the 6. Oh, what did I forget to do? What did I forget to do? Square right here, right? That should be squared. Let's put a bracket on there. Well, that's not right. It could be. Divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Yeah, that's right. 71.2. 71.2 is required to stop the electron. Okay.
Make sense? Wait a second. Wait a second. Have I made a mistake here? What have I solved for? I was looking for potential difference. I didn't find potential difference. What did I find? No, that's big V. Not final speed. Final potential. What's my potential difference if my final potential is 71? Josh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I assumed that the initial potential was zero. So when I solve for the final potential, get 71, then my potential difference is whatever the final is. So yeah, I didn't technically find potential difference, but I really did, right? As long as I recognize that the initial potential was zero there. All right. Okay, let's take a look then at uh, the last two questions on that worksheet, number six and seven. I'll give you a chance to work on those at your desks now. All right, everybody look up here. I want to take a look at number six, not solve it for you, but I want to um, just take a look at how we've set it up. And I'll give you the answer to make sure that you can solve it correctly here. It says an electron begins at this speed and it's slowed down. Okay, right away, right away. Like, it's like when I see force versus time graph, I right away think area equals impulse, even, at, even when I don't know what I'm being asked. Okay. I still think area equals impulse. When I see an electron slowing down, I right away think conservation of energy, car going down a hill. Uh, sorry, car going up a hill because it's slowing down. So picture the car going up the hill, conservation of energy. What kind of energy does the car have at the bottom of the hill? Well, it's got to be moving if it's going to go up the hill. So it's going to have kinetic energy, right? What kind does it have? What kind does it have when it reaches the top of the hill? Well, it's still moving, so it's still got kinetic energy. What kind of uh, does it have due to its height? Well, it's got potential energy. But we're not talking about gravitational potential energy in this context. We're talking about electric potential energy. So it would be Q times Vf, big V being the final potential. We're looking for um, the final speed right here. We know the potential difference is 15 volts. What am I going to make VF the final potential? Well, as long as you make the initial potential zero, then the final potential would be 15, the same as the potential difference. 